Temporary Australians is proudly brought to you by Harley-Davidson Australia, Fraser Motorcycles, Brotherhood CMC, Victory Motorcycles, the Australian Motorcycle Expo, Oztrikes and Think Right. Hello and welcome to another episode of Temporary Australians. I'm Jonesy. And I'm Hursty. You've been to Western Australia, Greg. Mate, I have. People don't know, but there's some great motorcycle roads over there. It's uh, pretty much a new experience for us, but uh, loved it. Everyone thinks it's flat, though. Yeah, well, it's not 30 kilometres away from Perth, and you've got these great hills to ride through. Locals love it. Mm. And what else do you see there? What, what, what sort of infrastructure is there? Mate, there's lots of dams. <laughs> no need for your language, Greg. Also coming up on the show, we've got this. Benno takes us on a ride just outside Perth. We find out how Poo got his name. Jonesy visits the motorcycle clubhouse. We check out a real biker's garage in South Australia and look at a biker's view of Aussie humour. Jonesy catches up with some famous motorcycle figures and we go on a demo ride in Western Australia. Well, here we are over in Perth, less than 30 k's from the CBD, and we've hit the Darling Ranges. Over in the East Coast, a lot of bikers think that Perth is just flat and desert, but here we are with lots of hills, lots of curves, and some great scenery. So let's enjoy the ride. We're at the uh, dam at Churchman's Brook. Uh, we've come for a nice little ride, uh, courtesy of Benno from Hunter Motorcycles. Ben, thanks for organising this, mate. No worries, and uh, welcome to WA, Greg. Yeah, it's certainly been a, a great initiation. I must admit, I'd never thought that I'd find roads like this so close to Perth. I mean, we have the perception over the east that it's just all flat and desert here, but it's not. It looks like it when you fly in, just looks like a big flat land, but yeah, we're uh, 20 minutes from suburbia here, not even, and. Uh, it's a beautiful ride, nice twisty roads, and, uh, yeah, there's, and there's dams all along the Darling Ranges, so there's, there's plenty to look at, and we'll uh, take in a couple more on the ride. One of the things that strikes me about this um, ride is just the diversity of bikes. You've got, obviously, a number of hunters, but there's Harleys, there's Jap bikes, I even saw a scooter at one point. Yeah, well, we didn't sort of discriminate. Everybody's welcome to come along and um, have a free feed on us and uh, take in the day. And, um, you know, our hunter riders love to, you know, get together. And some, some of them have never been on big group rides before. A lot of them are new to motorcycling. And um, so this is our, our way of sort of uh, introducing them to the motorcycling com community and uh, have a bit of fun. We're at the Rock Inn Tavern. Uh, we're less than 30 k's from Perth, right in the middle of Darling Ranges. It's been a great ride, and we've really had a ball riding these beautiful country roads, lots of windy bits, and the Western Australian boys, they really know how to show you a good time. Wollongong is famous for its fog and its rain. Thank you very much. You've got it for us today. Yes, we certainly delivered today. Um, it's been a bit of a shame on open day. I uh, like to get out and ride the bikes, but um, that's what happens, and when you ride motorcycles, it rains. So, you know, you deal with it and you, you move on. Well, what's the motorcycle scene like in Wollongong, mate? Oh, it's very popular in Wollongong. Uh, we have a, a, a big following in Hog, and there's several other chapters as well as Hog, and um, we ride together and, and associate with each other, and, and um, there's some brilliant rides, absolute brilliant rides around Wollongong. Tell us about some of them, mate. Well, there's the ever-popular Macquarie Pass. Um, that's very popular with the sports bikes, but also with the Harleys, because it's a nice cruise. And 
it's a it's a long windy uphill road and then you can you got Robertson pie shop at the top and you can have a pie and, and a hot coffee and turn around and come back and do it again and I find that it's therapeutic to get out on the bike whatever problems you got just go for a ride and it's all solved well, I have to ask you how did you get your nickname mate? <laughs> uh, that was um, put on me from the boys at work actually um, I have a bit of knee problem and um, I have a bit of trouble walking straight so I kind of waddle a bit and, and the boys said oh you waddle like Winnie the Pooh so they shortcut it just to poo and it's, it's stuck so yeah, I'm happy with that in fact you probably find a lot of people in the club don't know my real name they just know me by poo so yeah it's good So Ferret, is it easy to join a 1% club? No, not really, because you've got to start off, you've got to hang around first, you've got to know some people there, you can't just turn up off the street. You become a nominee for a period of time and then maybe you'll become a member. So you've got to go through all that just to get there. How long have you been in it for? I've been a member for 25 years. And, and, and was that pretty much the same thing for you? Oh, same with everyone in our club. Yeah. No one in our club has not been a nominee. Tell us about the patch. Our patch started off, uh, we've been around since 1969. It started off, we wanted a name that no one else would use. And we used Bung from the Wizard of Id cartoon in the paper at first. We changed him around. And the saying there was the king is a fink. So we called the club the Finks. And, and the original patch, I was just noticing, is up there. Yep. Uh, so that was the, the first? That's exactly what it looked like at first. In the early um, 70s, most were done by hand. There was no embroidery machines like today. If there was, you couldn't find them and they'd be too dear. Nowadays, you just ring up, then send them an email and they'll send you something back. But we've just evolved with the times. Bung's changed, as you can see there. He's got more muscly and more handsome like the members in the club. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid and you'd see a club ride past, you're always like, just impressed with the, the sheer presence that they have. Well, it's like birds when they fly in the sky. If you see two birds flying along, you don't really take any notice. If you see a whole pack of birds, everyone will look. So, it's not like you're a pack of birds, but that's true. I'll kill you. <laughs> We're in the little South Australian town of Strathalban at a really unique motorcycle garage. Uh, how popular is this place, Wayne? Oh, particularly on weekends, very popular. And when the weather's nice, it's, uh, it's quite popular. Not only can you get uh, coffee and so on, but the fuel, of course, is an attraction. Plus, uh, there's a mechanic out the back, and there's um, yeah, spares and that sort of thing which are available. I've never actually seen a garage that's set up for motorcycles. This must be fairly unique, I would guess. Is it unique in South Australia? Uh, it is unique in South Australia, and not only that, of course, open Saturday and Sunday. And so that's the uniqueness as well. So uh, that's pretty popular. Yeah, a good destination. You know, we have all walks of life and all sort of different motorcyclists coming in every weekend and it's a real meeting point. I gather um, lots of Adelaide riders um, come to the Adelaide Hills on the weekends, so do you, do you yeah. find that people actually seek out this place? Yeah, definitely. We're, it's a pretty well-known destination. A lot of, as you've probably discovered coming here today, the roads in and out of Strathalbyn are a lot of fun and there's a lot of different directions you can come to get here. And it's just a really good, enjoyable place to ride. You know, I, I live fairly locally. I can go home four different ways and enjoy every single one of them. Have you had any famous riders come through? We have, we have. Uh, Casey Stoner actually borrowed a bike from us a few years ago, back when he was on Aprilia. Took it out for a ride and uh, got to enjoy the Adelaide Hills himself. Married an Adelaide girl, so he knows the area pretty well. well so that's an interesting um, sales pitch, isn't it? Borrow a bike and marry a South Australian girl. He did well, on both, on both accounts. A good bike and a beautiful wife. <laughs> now it's obvious that you're a Casey Stoner fan, but I did notice you got a picture of Michael Dewan over the ladies' sign at the back. Now that really is a bit of sacrilege, I think, Paul. Ah, uh, look, we're lovers of all motorbikes here. We sell Motor Guzzi in Aprilia, but we're lovers of all motorbikes. You can find examples of Aussie humour everywhere, from the Rock Inn, Rock Inn, over in Western Australia, uh, to some of the great celebrities of our country who love to tell a yarn, who love to make fun of their mates. And in the bike scene, it's a big part of the way we relate to each other. See, the, the, the strange or the macabre or the, uh, the eccentric or the, uh, you know, that always appeals to me. You know, anyone that's got a really wacky sort of sense of humour or, set, you know, view of things, we get it when we put on one another. We really get that and we're really good at it and we're really good at getting it. Well, it's kind of expected, isn't it? Well, yeah, in fact, if you don't do it, you're kind of like, you know, what's wrong with him? 
or her. Australian humour. Uh, a lot of the rest of the world don't get it, and it doesn't matter what race, creed, colour you are. <laughs> Australians will have it, will have a, a have a have a go at you. you know, Paulie Phoenix Houses is, is the perfect declaration of that. Yeah, no, we'll just do a bashing for them, or maybe knock off some cars, then we'll get you some cash, mate. <laughs> Oh, choice, bro. He's having a really big dig at motorcycle clubs. He's having a laugh at the uh, perception of the general public of, of about motorcycle clubs, and he's having a, probably a little bit of a dig, dig at some of the guys who are taking themselves a little bit too serious. Uh, the fact that they're that the motorcycle club are riding around on on hunter motorcycles and not Harleys. Most of my mates that, that have seen it are just, you know, like, yeah. It's obviously a joke, you know? What the f*** happened to me, boy? Like anyone that's in my shows, we're, we're going to take the piss out of you, I'm sorry. So I don't care if you're, you know, 100% or half percent. We're going to make some jokes about you if you're in our shows. So sorry, sorry, don't, don't come after me. I'm just a comedian. Why do girls dig uh, outlaw motorcycle clubs? Why, why, do, why do girls like Finks? <laughs> Seriously. No, well, girls, a lot of blokes in clubs train, yeah. look after themselves, like to party. They're not going to just sit at home or watch television all night while their tea gets cooked for them and wait for their tea and then go to bed. We like to have a good time. And when you see TV shows like, say, Sons of Anarchy or something, are, are they close to the reality or miles away from it? No, no, shows like that are overplayed. They kill someone every episode and you never hear about it again. They go to jail, they're out in two minutes. It's just an act. People believe things like that, so the TV shows it. But the worst thing about it is people believe more, because more people watch it now, so they think they understand. You've got people running around now with Sons of Anarchy t-shirts on, they think they're in that club. It's a TV show. If I wanted to become a Fink, what would be the first thing I'd have to do, other than not beat you in pool? <laughs> Being in the Finks is a different lifestyle. It's not just, I think I'll join the Finks. People need to hang around first to see what we're about. There's so many different clubs because there's so many different sort of angles you can go at at being a biker. So if you don't fit into the Finks, you can maybe fit in somewhere else. What's the score? 66 to zero. Right. Well, uh, I'm not going to argue. Ferret, thanks for having That's me. Right. Always welcome here to lose any time. <laughs> Victory Motorcycles, how long have they been in Australia for? Victory have only been here for four years, just on four years, and uh, we've made a lot of inroads in a very short time and doing very well. And what's your role with Victory? Are you the, the, the big kahuna? Yeah, that's one title. I'm the uh, country manager of motorcycles is my official title. So if I wanted a free bike, I'd just say, hey, how about a free bike? You could ask me about that. I don't know what the answer would be. Not that I'd do that. So um, what, what first drew you to Victory? Uh, I'm a, a motorcyclist at heart and I've been around Polaris which is the parent company of Victory uh, for a long time and uh, when uh, Victory was on the drawing boards for Australia of course they were looking for people who might have a bit of motorcycle experience and uh, so I got drawn into it that way and have been involved ever since. And also a company that's instrumental in bringing back a classic motorcycle brand, the Indian. Yes, Indian's on the horizon for us. Uh, we purchased the Indian Motorcycle Company 18 months, two years ago now, and have been working hard at uh, what the future of Indian will be, and we're looking forward to when that happens. When will that happen? Uh, we don't have an exact date, but we're, I would say that 12 months from now we'll uh, either be have motorcycles on the ground or be very close to it. And what are we launching here today? So today we've got a new product called the Boardwalk, uh, which is just behind us here, uh, which is a classic beach cruiser style bike. A lovely looking motorcycle, very plain, it's not too blingy, uh, it uh, invokes memories of the past, the big long guards, the smooth styling, uh, we're real happy to have it out, the customers have really been drawn to it, so it's been great. I, I get with Polaris and Victory getting together, will we ever see a jet ski motorcycle hybrid? I'll talk to our product development guys about that, you never know. Because I've got some plans and, and I really think it could take off. I'll pass on your number. Thank you. I notice you're not writing this down, Peter. I've got a very good memory. Oh, excellent. Peter Harvey, thank you. No problem, thank you. Here's the story of the hurricane. Uh, this isn't about a man that was jailed for a crime that he didn't commit. This is about a motorcycle called the hurricane whose only crime was possibly it was a little on the boring side. I'm talking about the CBR 1000F. 
manufactured from 1987 to late 1999. The Hurricane, as it was known back then, went through only three major revisions. In 89, the bike received a cosmetic makeover with a complete redesign of the front fairing. But when I say boring, that's probably a bit unfair. It was because it was a full fared beast. Honda fans were so used to the open fairing of the CB series. When these things came out, a lot of people said they're the Ford Laser of the motorcycle world. But look, the Ford Laser doesn't have a top speed of 300 kilometres. Not that I would be pushing this thing to 300 kilometres. But they are such a bulletproof bike. They went forever. They're perfect in traffic. And resale value, you're looking at about $3,000 for a good one. This one in particular has 122,000 Ks on it, which is pretty good. The riding was on the wall for the CBR 1000F in 1995 when Honda introduced the Fireblade and the model was discontinued in 1996 when the Blackbird was released. Largely gobbled up by motorcycle couriers in the 90s because they were so reliable, all they'd do is take off these lower fairings so they wouldn't overheat in traffic. The only problem I have with the CBR 1000F is this. I'll just go into my handy workshop manual. Here it is. See that? Part number five, the collar washer. It's a $2.50 part. The problem is to get to it, you've got to split the cases. So $1,500 later, your Honda's back up and running again. But other than that, I have no problems with the CBR 1000. I'll close the book on this, and this is a sled we love in our shed. Recently retired Parramatta legend, although there's nothing retiring about this man, Nathan Hindmarsh. How are you going, Heidi? I'm well, James. How are you? Great, great. So tell us about your sled. Yeah, Street Glide, mate. Um, just picked it up the other week. Usually on a, I'm at the moment I'm on a soft tail slim, so for just for the ride to camera today, I'm on the on the Street Glide for a bit more comfort. Big world of difference between uh, soft tail slim and a Street Glide. Uh, this feels like sitting at home on an armchair watching the footy. So and, and you've got your stereo on. You're listening to your your, your CD. Yeah, yeah. I had the uh, I was listening to the radio on the way in this morning. Of course, 1017. Yeah. Bit of Carly Rae Jepsen as well. He likes the uh, new stuff. Yeah, all that type of stuff, mate. Yeah. And how are you going with retiring? Is it nice just not watching footy? Uh, to be honest, mate, I haven't really had a chance to think about retirement yet. You know, I'm still watching the semi-finals. Um, watch Manly win last night, but I think I think once it'll hit home once the boys, you know, go back after Christmas and really get stuck into a new season. Hindy, shiny side up, okay. We'll see you in Canberra. We'll see you there. Rob, uh, it's turned out a beautiful day today in uh, Perth in Western Australia for a ride. What exactly are you guys doing? Oh, this is our demo day. Um, it's a perfect day today, 30 degrees, it's not too hot, it's not too windy. The demo ride today is the opportunity for anyone to book in a test ride on a 2013 model Harley Davidson. Uh, we have rides on the hour, they go for approximately 40 minutes and it gives them an opportunity to ride one through the streets of Perth, then onto a freeway where they can go to the 100k limit out there and back in through the suburbs again. So it gives them a good all round feel for the bike. And it even attracted a bloke from Sydney. What are you doing over here in Perth? Warren's well, bring the truck over and uh, put a bit of a show on, so. Well, you do that quite regularly, don't you, at Fraser's short stores? Yeah, I, I go to all the, all the Harley launch days, all the open days that Fraser has and um, around the country. That's part of my job as sponsorship for my race team. And when Mick starts his bike, you better have your earplugs handy. We have a reasonable sized fleet as demos. It means that other people can get a, a, a feel for riding with a group of motorcycles, maybe not just one-on-one, -on -one, so that they know, might, might not feel so conspicuous or something like that but in, in a group, they feel like they're part of a group ride. My role in the ride day today, uh, lead rider, basically keeping an eye on all the other riders and making sure that the group stays together, uh, helping out where needed amongst the, the group as we ride, which involves watching the traffic lights, making sure everybody, trying to keep everybody together as a group, but also to make sure that we get along in the traffic and that it flows nicely for everybody to enjoy their ride. Have you been on these ride days before? No, not even ridden a Harley before. Plenty of um, open space on the highway to wind it up a bit and a few takeoffs here and there as well, so you get to learn the bike a fair bit. Well, I first I rode the Fat Bob and then I rode the Night Rod. A good day to compare two different bikes. Why did you come along? Uh, well, I'm up to upgrade my bike, so um, just get my options out there. Harley or a Trumpy. I don't mind the way your, your legs are right up there. 
you're the king of the road. <laughs> Oh, wasn't it great to see Western Australia? That's where I got my start in radio, you know. And you rode over there too, didn't you? Yeah, I had an old Honda. I used to overheat at the drop of a hat. I was right up north, though, in Caratha, not in the fancy city of Perth, Caratha, where the men are men and the women are men too. I'll remember that when I go over there and I'll tell them. Especially if you're on the dating scene, Greg, but I don't think it's going to worry you too much. You're happily married. Ladies, back off. Until next week, we'll see you on Temporary Australians. Shiny side up. See ya.